This is the Rich Dad Stockcast with Andy Tanner, the show that kicks 401ks in the asphalt and teaches you to be the master of your own stock investing domain. And here's your host, Greg Arthur. All right, welcome to this week's episode. Uh, this show is called Cash Flowing Stocks Using Covered Calls. Last week we did naked calls and it made a lot of people uncomfortable. So <laughs> thought we'd help them out with covered calls. But Andy, I do have a, a story, a, a weird thing happened to me today. And I, and I wanna I wanna tell you the story, but it's, and it is gonna lead into covered calls. So you just gotta be a little bit forgiving, a little patient with it. You betcha. But, I notice I'm wearing a Cardinals shirt right now. Yeah. Arizona Cardinals. Uh, so uh, as of right now, the taping of this episode, the Arizona Cardinal football team, we just beat the previously undefeated Seattle Seahawks. It and was, that's huge I, for us. I actually uh, didn't see the game, but I saw highlights of it because they said it was the best game in the league this year so far. I, I would say so. It, it was it was phenomenal, probably because we won, but you know. <laughs> So I, I know this is not a sports cast, um, uh, but this will have something to do with investing. So you just got to give me a sec here. Uh, so I am, of course, I'm a huge Cardinal fan. So I'm in the, the Cardinal fan Facebook group. Okay. And one of the guys in this group, he, he is selling his season tickets. So he, he has phenomenal tickets. They're like right at the 50 yard line, but they're like 800 bucks each. Right. Like they're a lot, but he's doing this crazy thing that I hadn't seen done in tickets before. And I don't even know if the NFL would let you, but he's offering to sell his tickets only for the last game in the season. All right. To anyone who will pay him $400 now to hold them, but then another $800 when the game is ready to be played. Okay. So it's kind of like, to me, I was like, that's kind of like an options contract, but where it gets crazy is the guy, the buyer, the person who gives him the $400 only has three games to make his decision on whether or not he's willing to pay the $800. All right. So, so my question is like, is this a good investment? If, because if the Cardinals suddenly tank in the next three games, which are super hard games, by the way, if they suddenly tank, um, it, like if we don't do really well in the next six games, it's almost impossible for us to get in the playoffs. So we're knocked out. And then the last game is basically worthless. So if the last game has the possibility of being worthless, a total snoozer, the tickets become almost worthless. But if the team keeps winning, the last game of the season is against our biggest rival and it should be amazing. And, and so I looked up last year's price of the tickets two thousand five hundred dollars yeah all right so this guy's asking 400 bucks to hold it now but he'll only hold it for the next three games but he'll only charge you 800 more bucks and it could be phenomenal deal but it could be the worst deal ever right so i feel like that's very similar (laughs) to what a covered call is is am i understanding what a covered call is because he's got the tickets so it's covered Yep. He's kind of doing an option. He's giving you a, a very small time limit to decide if you want to purchase the end has product. Has an expiration. Yeah, it has an expiration. And, and it has could a go strike up. price at 800 It could go down, right? Strike price is 800 So let me ask you this. Yeah. Is this guy doing covered calls using NFL tickets? Looks like he is to me, man. That's is that, pretty good. Is that right? Me. Pretty good. No question. Yeah. So what's the guy? Listen to the guy who owns the tickets. What's his da- what's his downside? I mean, okay, the downside could be he gets four hundred dollars. Yeah. Now, now remember, he paid eight hundred dollars for the tickets, so right. his downside is he has to go to the game, or he has to find another buyer. Yeah, the value of his ticket could go less than what he paid for it, right? Yeah. Okay. What's the other downside he has? He's giving up. He's capping his gain because if those tickets are two grand come that Sunday, yeah, he's got to give them up for 800. Yeah, right? totally. Yeah. So he's, so the way you might start is he's giving up a bird. He's, he's taking a bird in the hand, $400 and he's giving up two in the bush. Okay. Okay. I love it. Yeah. That's a great metaphor, dude. Well, Interesting I- that I'll bet he trades. 
<laughs> yeah, that's yeah. My thought was he. My thought was it's probably Andy Tanner doing this, but I, I'm not. I, so I need you to explain covered calls a little better because I don't fully get covered calls, and so I wasn't sure if this was a true analogy. It's of interesting that. how you know I love as a as a teacher. One of the compliments we try to get, you know, people say, "Why are you fishing for compliments?" One of the ones I'll fish for. It, because I hope we accomplish it is to make things simple. And often people, when they take our training, they say, wow, you know, we made this simple. And one of the techniques we do is just what you did is we, we look at something outside of stock that someone would understand really well. And we say, do you understand this? They say, yeah, I understand this. I go, well, let's look at it in stocks. They go, oh, I get that. Right. Yeah, so yeah. if you can leave the context of stocks, and put it in something that, that someone would understand there. And, and everyone can understand everybody's motives. That's the, that's the thing that's been interesting about teaching my son is he's never questioning anyone's motive. He's not old enough to be skeptical. He says, oh, okay, all right. And he learns so much faster. We as adults are like, how could I lose? What's this other guy's motivation? Yeah, yeah. We're, Why we're is he doing paranoid. That? Too good a deal. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So let's look at, let's stay with your, your tickets. Okay. What is, let's look at the person who, uh, who pays the $400. Let's look at the person who has the choice to either buy these tickets or not right. in three games. What's his maximum risk? The maximum risk would be $400. Yeah. It's the premium paid, isn't it? That's the most he can lose. And what's, so his downside is that, uh, these tickets, you know, go lousy. They're no fun. You know, it's it's like no one wants to go to this game. He's got something else going on, and he takes the four hundred dollar hit. That's the worst thing that can happen. Is he yeah, takes the yeah. four hundred dollar hit. Um, what's his upside? Well, he could then give the guy the eight hundred dollars. So now he's twelve hundred dollars in, but he could turn around. So he upside is he could go to a great game. Or his upside or, is infinity. Because okay. let's say the Cardinals, you know, it's all of a sudden they hit a roll and this yeah. sparks them. This win says, okay, we just beat Seattle. You know, we've got lightning in our, in our bodies now. Uh, let's say they go blow out the next two, three games. It's like, they look like they could be a Super Bowl team. Yeah. So now let's say these tickets are going to go for, you know, $3,000. Well, he can buy them for eight and sell them for three and double his money. Yeah, essentially. Right. He could double his money. There's no limit to the ticket price. Now it, there's no ceiling on those tickets. So he's in a, in a levered position. And, and the reason this is so nice is you can see the logic on both sides because value, this is really important. There is such thing as a win-win here. Value is in the eye of the beholder, right? And so the person uh, selling the option for 400 gets upfront cash flow, right? And uh, if he sells those for 800, he's made a $400 profit. You know, if that's what he bought them for, who knows right. what he bought them for? Um, and he's happy with that. The guy saying, you know, I'll take that risk. I'll put out 400. I'll take that risk. Now I don't have to spend eight to find out what's going to happen. I get to spend half as much. So by understanding that both people are comfortable with the situation, that's great. Well, you know, last week we talked about naked and being naked is simply making promises that you can't keep. You're not, you can't cover your promises, right? You can't cover them. And so covered options are, uh, are really cool, particularly the covered call strategy. That's one of my favorite, favorite when you back test these. And you look at it historically, it's one of the, um, it's a very favorable trade. Okay. There's so when you say back test, you're saying if you were to go back the last 10 years and look at history, covered calls, you'll, you'll see that the results are favorable. Well. Yeah. Okay. It's one of the better strategies and they're so conservative because you can look at this guy doing it. You're getting upfront cash. What's not to like there. You have the ability to keep your promises, right? You're going to be selling a stock generally at a, at a price you are comfortable in selling it at if you sell it at all. Right. Uh, if the price of those tickets fall, that's a risk he was taking anyway. So he's not taking any more risk. In fact, he's taking less because he's got four hundred dollars. His cost basis now has gone from eight hundred to four hundred. Right. Right. So this can be done in an IRA, right? 
and so I do covered calls pretty much every month. Well, every month. Um, and what I, and, and there's, you know, we won't get into the wonkiness of it, but there's really several ways you can do them. And, uh, you can do them as a defensive strategy. You can do them as a cash flow strategy. That's how I see it. But, uh, I, you know, I'm brainwashed to look at everything from a cash flow perspective. I think that, you know, most of the time I use it as a cash flow strategy, but you can set them up as a, uh, as a first step to a defense. Um, what would be really interesting is this is what if this guy that got the $400 took a hundred of it and bought some insurance against the falling ticket price. So bought a put. So, yeah. So now he'd have what we call a caller and that's the most conservative defensive strategy you can have. So often when I see an earnings date coming up where I might see some volatility, possible volatility in the stock, we'll sell a call, and then use that money to buy a put. And now you've, you can neutral, you know, be in a very neutral, neutral position over in earnings and uh, in, immunize yourself against some of that stuff. So quick question then, if you were to, if you were to do that, you're kind of like top bottom protected. Yep. Does that, does that, am I oversimplifying to say there's no way to lose money then? Yeah. There's no way to make any either. Yeah. Um, well, is it, you're not making it or is it, you're just, what you're making is so little. Yeah. What, what you make is so little or none at all. I mean, you, you can get what we call Delta neutral and, and that can be nice if the stock pays a dividend because someone says, well, if you can't make any, you can't lose any. That's the same as just selling the stock, right? Just right. get out of the position. Like but why you, bother? So it can, so for stocks that you want to keep and protect for a while, sell a call, buy a put, but let's talk about covered calls and go a little deeper with this. When I, uh, one of the things I'm teaching my son is when we want to get to what call, what's called infinite return, which means that you would like to eventually have all your money out of the deal. So let's say you had a stock that was $10 and it paid some ridiculous 10% dividend in, you know, fantasy land for our example. All right. Um, let's say you buy it for a hundred dollars and it pays a $10 dividend every year. Well, it would take 10 years to get all your money out of that deal. And once you have all your money out of the deal, you're at infinite return. You know, that's the way Rich Dad teaches it. Okay, let's say you only had $5 in you know, dividend. Now it'd take you 20 years to get all your money back. Right. And okay, let's say it's only $1. Well, now it'd take you, you know, 100 years to get all your money back out of it. And so to, one of the things I love about the covered call is it helps me get my money back out sooner. That uh, let's say that's a hundred dollar stock and the dividend's like two bucks, and it's going to take me fifty years to get out of there. What if I can get a dollar a month out of it? Well, now it's now it's you know forty some odd months. You know that's four years. Right, right. And so you can uh, you can get your money back out of those a lot faster. Now your downside is is you might wind up either a selling your stock. Well, let's go to your football analogy. What if uh, this, this football ticket holder changes his mind? What if all of a sudden the Cardinals go on a roll and here he's made this promise, he's obligated uh, to this guy, you know, he gave him the 400 bucks, they have this, you know, agreement. I don't know how they're going to enforce it with a handshake or contract or no. whatever. Right. But let's say the Cardinals go on a roll and he says, you know, I just gave up my tickets, uh, $800 price tag to make a lousy 400 bucks. They're 3000 now. I want to go to this game or I want to sell them to someone else. Well, he have to go back to that person and say, how much does it going to cost me to get out of this contract? And right, it's going right. to cost him a lot. And that happens with covered calls. Sometimes when, uh, when the stock soars and I say, you know, I really didn't want to give this thing up. So what we do is, is we want to, you know, I, I play this little game with my little basketball kids where I palm the basketball like this and they try to get it. And I just kind of, it's this thing, you know, right, and, right, and yeah. who can get it. That's very much what I like to do with covered calls is maybe I bought the stock at $50. I say, well, I'll take less premium and I'll promise to sell it 60 that way, if I keep my promise, I've at least made 10. 
Yeah. And it's usually just right outside of their reach. So let's get a little technical. Your, your metaphor was so good. I think people follow it. I think we can get a little more, you know, Robert hates detail, but it's, it's, you know, it's fun to delve sometimes and uh, let that detail tempt us, tempt us to talk. Okay, so hold on, hold on here. So you're about you're about to go into a little bit of detail. Yep. Give, give us a, a little bit of, of a secret here, but I have a new thing on this show for you. Yeah. yeah. We actually have a sponsor on the show. Let's have a word from our sponsor. Let's have a word from our sponsor. So this is kind of a funky sponsor because um, he's not a typical sponsor. He didn't even pay to get on the show. Um, in fact, I went out and approached this sponsor uh, who wrote a book that that blew my mind and and this guy was on Robert's uh, podcast and it blew my mind so I contacted this guy and said hey can I give our listeners your book free so it's kind of a, a different type of a sponsorship but in the show notes if you want to get this free book uh, there'll be a link um, and what makes this great is Andy you always say that you got to get educated before you invest and that's right. how you you learn how to determine a good investment from a bad investment. Um, and so, you know, I, as some of the listeners know, I've been taking your course and, and I've been starting investing. And and like I said, I, I ran into this guy. His name is Marin. And I, I found him on the show, uh, Robert's show. And this guy has been I've been talking to this guy and he, he's been pointing me in directions and I've been checking out all his his tips and they have been phenomenal. Like he's a math like, teacher. Yeah, he used to teach calculus to high schoolers. So you know yeah. this guy. Okay. Uh, he hasn't been wrong one time. So I'm not saying he'll never be wrong. So let's, <laughs> let's be clear there. But but he hasn't been one wrong once since I've been talking to him. So kind of kind of like you, Andy, he's all about doing the due diligence before you invest. Yeah. Um, he does it a little different. He has super strict rules that, that he never breaks. For example, if he's investing in a gold mine, right? He, he actually flies to the gold mine. Usually it's in some Eastern European country. He brings his top ge geologist and they, they go in, they go into the mine and inspect it, right? Like they, they take their due diligence to the next level, but then he takes it a step further. And, and one of the things I love is he then meets with the CEO, the executive team, and he looks at their financials. And if they haven't personally, their own money invested in this mine, he's out. He's like, I don't want to yeah. be in, I don't want to be in an investment where the people running it don't well even believe Robert. It. I don't know him as well as Robert does, but I also know he's done very, very well with uh, renewables. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's, he's really into the, the he's clean got a good record of, of renewables. Yeah. He, so, cool. He's amazing. So I'm not, I'm not trying to get anybody here Let's to go and pause and word from the sponsor. Right. So, yeah. So I'm not saying go invest with with Marin, but I do think it's worth going to the show notes, reading his book and, and learning how he invests and then kind of make your own decisions about him. So that's our first sponsorship. Uh, one thing I would love is if if the listeners like this type of sponsorship, if they like these kind of breaks and, and they want like free products or free trainings, let us know in the comments. Let us know what you think about the book and and we'll take your lead. We'll either continue to find great free products for you or we won't so that's my interruption and i wanted to interrupt right as you were about to get to the the best part of what you were going to do and, <laughs> and dig a little deeper because i i wanted to keep a little suspense there for the listeners so so andy i just wanted to tell everyone to go to the show notes also the show notes andy i don't even know if you know this but we put access to some of your oh, no i've never seen the show notes we put some of your free training in the show notes as, too, oh, cool. as well so if you click, so you can click and get some of Andy's free training. You can click and get this free book. We we're trying to pack value to the show. So make sure awesome. everybody you go to the show notes. That's all I got. Yeah. This. I have to right, confess. Andy. I have been wrong many times. So, cause I don't have a calculus degree, <laughs> right. but, but what's fun is uh, when you, when you make that promise at a higher price than what you bought the stock at, or where the stock is today, the technical term for that is we say, well, it's out of the money, technical okay. term. And what's nice is, is those have a, a high chance of expiration. So if you want to get fancy with it, you say, well, what, what does this stock deviate? Uh, you know, historically, how much does it deviate? What's its standard deviation? And maybe I'll make my promise outside of what it does. And I'm going to get less cash flow for that. 
but my chances of, of having that aspire work worthless are very, very high. So your risk is lower. You're all about risk mitigation. Well, my risk is, my, my, yeah, my risk is I own the stock, right? Less the premium I, I collect, which will be smaller um, because I'm, I'm selling that out here. <clears throat> but with the consistency of doing that, uh, I take a bird in the hand, I give up two in the bush, and once in a while I'll have to buy one back, um, which is fine because my stock's increased. Right. And uh, I'm okay with, with taking a little hit on that, buying it back once in a while because my stock's increased. And as you get into some of our trainings, we teach people about, uh, you know, it's, it's not just as simple as a football game. You know, there's some things in the stock market to learn and, you know, how much does the value of that, option increase when the stock increases is that one-to-one -one? no it's not it, it, that's important to know uh, and learn some of your greeks and deltas and the fancy stuff we don't talk about here but bottom line is is the covered call strategy is conservative it can be done in the united states in an ira and around the world generally in retirement accounts it is a fantastic cash flow generator is a staple in what I'm teaching my son and his investing strategies. And it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's easy to learn, but it can be made simple. And once someone has that, well, great. Now you have another tool in your toolbox. And, and Greg, the, the difference between this and the football analogy is this guy's trying to, he's in a less of a liquid market. You know, who's going to pay $400 and who's he going to find this guy? Uh, in the stock market, we're liquid click, it's sold. You know, you've got your, right. your call option sold. You've got the cash flow in hand. And so if a person can visualize the ability to simply demand money from the market with a click of a mouse, uh, we talked about last week, you know, how seductive that can be. We, we started with that video of the person, well, let me show you in two minute click, boom. Yeah. You know, I get money immediately. Well, that ease was part of the story. It wasn't the whole story, but it was part of the story. And so if a person understands the whole story and the risk and everything that goes involved, uh, I have no problem with saying, yeah, it's absolutely true. You can click a button and cash is in your account. And uh, that's, that's the fastest way to generate income that I know. Like if someone wanted to have an investing contest with me in terms of speed, uh, I can click a mouse and be paid in the blink of an eye, you know, fiber optic network, man. It's, right, right. So it's, it's really, really um, one of my favorite things to talk about. Can I and throw one more benefit? Metaphor is a great job. <laughs> thank you. Uh, wh one more thing. And I, and I know we, we need to wrap up real quick and thank you, by the way, for wrapping up for me last week um, is one of the problems that, that personally uh, Greg has had with dividends is generally speaking, generally, I know there's there's exceptions, that the dividend is low enough that it does take a long time before you get to that infinite return point. And yeah. so I, I felt afraid to do it because it's taking money out of my bank that, that if another opportunity comes along, um, I don't have the money in the bank anymore. And so I felt like it risked, the risk for me was the future opportunities that I might sacrifice. But if you add this cash flowing selling options technique on top of it, that, that takes away my risk because you've turned it into a yeah. cash flowing machine. I, I'll give you a, a, a real life example. I use this in my four pillars class and I, uh, I often refer to it because it's a trade that's worked well for me is uh, Warren Buffett owned a company called Heinz Ketchup. And uh, that's a pretty good staple. It's on most restaurant tables and they have a family of brands. And they decided to do a merger with Kraft, you know, like macaroni and cheese. And these companies own Orida French fries and, you know, I mean, Weight Watchers. I mean, they own all, I mean, dozens of companies, Philadelphia cream cheese. I mean, the list goes on. And they decided to do a merger. And it was one of Buffett's mistakes. And he confessed that and he paid too much for it. And uh, they, they had a little bit too much debt. Um, you know, they've had a little bit of problem with uh, competing with some of the healthier foods that come out and less processed. But they're still a staple. They're the fourth largest food company out there. And, 
And so they're, they, they had some problems with the SEC. They had to do what's called a write down of their brand equity, meaning they would claim that the brand craft was worth X amount. And they're like, well, that's kind of arbitrary. You know, what's a brand worth? Yeah, totally. So that's, that's, you know, subjective. So their stock price fell from $70 down to about 30. And I saw that as going on sale and their dividend at that time is paying about 5%, which is pretty decent because the price was so low. Right. So I hopped on that and uh, it's been about a year and about 18 months ago. And today that price is down. Uh, Kraft Heinz is down probably, you know, $30, 20 cents. It's been basically where it was when I bought it. But Greg, my cost basis is in the teens because I've been writing these options every month. My cost base in teams. In, a, in 18 months, I've gotten halfway to that zero mark almost. That's awesome. Does that make sense? Yeah. So think about this. What's my dividend yield? Because how much money do I actually have in that deal now? I've pulled so much money out that if if I count my if I if I do the accounting this way, which is my choice, if I count the money I've received from those calls, right, from those options that I've sold, and apply that to my cost basis, saying, well, now this is how much I have in the deal. What's really cool is is I can live with Kraft Heinz moving up and down and not going anywhere, because to me, well, let's say I paid you know eighteen bucks for it. I don't care if it's at 30. Right. And that dividend now is on $18 invested rather than, so now my dividend is like double what it was before. And, and that's the way my son, I teach him to look at it. And he actually does the math now. He says that based on what I've learned and how often I have to buy it back and everything, I think I could have all my money out of this thing in six years, which for a kid that's 14, yeah, that puts him at 20. Yeah, And now he has an asset that'll pay him a dividend for the rest of his life. I'll take that over a 401k any day of the week. So as you begin to see that those little bits and pieces over time of money that comes in from a covered call strategy, you know, it's not a perfect strategy. Nothing is, you know, people always try and find the magic bullet. I don't think it exists. I haven't found it yet. Um, But it's a great show to do to introduce people to say, well, wait a minute. I could be pushing a button and collecting income from stocks that I own to accelerate the cash flow. I get out of that. Uh, and your headache is, is when the stock goes up real fast and you have to, you know, take a hit, buy some stuff back. But if you are conservative in how you write these very legitimate, so there's not a, even the people I don't like on wall street and even the financial planners that I tend not to, to love, even they will tell you, this is, this is a tool in your toolbox for sure. It makes so sense. that's one of the things we teach in the four pillars. That's awesome. I mean, you're teaching two different ways to make money. The cash flow. Through a cover yeah. flow. That's, that's awesome. That's a great way to end the show. And, oh, and except I'll for say, one other thing. Go, go ahead. Well, and the thing to, to also remember is the more money I pull out of that, the lower my cost basis is, the more I can stomach ups and downs and not pull my hair out. I don't need Kraft Heinz to go up. And that's a huge thing. Yeah. I don't need that stock to go up. Uh, I can still get money from it. Um, if that if that stock behaved for the next five years, the way it's behaved in the last 18 months, I have no problem with it if I can keep collecting what I'm collecting out of it and they don't cut their dividends. So awesome. it, it really gives an insight on why Warren Buffett didn't sell it, even though he said he made a mistake. And he said, he says, yeah, they got a little debt, but they can pay it off and pay their dividend and they make like $300 million a year off their dividend. So uh, why would I sell a box that's paying me 300 million a year? Okay. And uh, yeah, good stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you, Andy. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. Really fun right. talk. Great job on the uh, Cardinals. Congratulations. Oh yeah. Go Cardinals. we got to end with the go Cardinals. And then also uh, check the show notes for some free education and uh, a free ebook. So. Thank you very much, Andy. Take care. See you you next week. Yep. Awesome.